How's it going, everybody? Welcome to our uh, July 24th, 2024 uh, university work group meeting here in CATS. Um, before we get started, I will say that we are taking our summer break. Uh, chaos summer break. We do this every summer. Not right now, but uh, it is from August 5th to whatever the next next Friday is. Two weeks. 16th, maybe? Something like that. It's a two-week break that we take at the beginning of August. Mm -hmm. We do it every year. It's it's nice. Um, we also take a break around the new year. Um, so just heads up for everybody. That's when a lot of school is starting too. <laughs> so this group might appreciate <laughs> a little bit of, of relief any way you can find it during that period of time. So um, some pretty good places uh, for vacations. I like it. I think I'd like to go to all these, except maybe Waukesha. No offense, Sean. But... Yeah, no, none taken. It's, uh, it's not real exciting. I've been to Waukesha. And... <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, not like mine was any better. I was just a little further north of Waukesha. So... You're closer to Green Bay, which is the center of Earth, so... <laughs> Uh, all right, so I thought maybe if we could just take a few minutes. I know a lot of people um, <clears throat> here were here or were at the OSPO for Good um, convention or meeting, you know, gathering. Any like high level thoughts or takeaways that you want to share with this group? You thought was cool or not cool or something we could do in the future? I think there was a good, like, there was. A general feeling from everyone I talked to that they really appreciated the first two days, which were actually in the UN, that it was interesting enough, but that there was a, but due to the fact that it was in the UN and kind of in this very structured environment, um, there wasn't a lot of a chance for um, give and take. So that third day when they actually went to, we went to the uh, Microsoft, um, the Microsoft offices, the Linux Foundation, Apache Foundation sponsored event. Um, that, that was actually a much more like what we, we are all kind of used to for an open source conference or a general conference. So that was, so I think we all got to like hold it in. I mean, I'm sorry, because Angela didn't get into that one. I felt really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Which you could have totally showed up, basically. <laughs> As, but they told it. me I couldn't because they said that I, they had agreements I, I, with Microsoft. I didn't. I, I sorry. I probably, maybe should have left that one. That, that but somebody showed up and just they said, "Oh no, sorry." I you know I, basically the same story you had, and and they're like, "Oh okay," and they just yeah we handed her. Wow. Well, <laughs> next year I'm gonna be there. So. Yeah, just next be there. Year. Well, hopefully you it's just, that part. Thing. The registration isn't quite so crazy, and it was not that it wasn't pretty <clears> full. <throat> it was just not completely full. And there are people in and out. So I think that they they just and I think they if somebody actually showed up to the door, they didn't they didn't send them away. Let's put it that way. So um but that was a good I mean that was good that is I mean I'd, I'd like to hear from David and who else oh who else was in there? I can't see who it all is yeah, um, I don't have the right screen up, but um but yeah the uh I mean that's what I felt generally um true. I mean I, I and I felt there was a little lopsidedness on the UN. Like I you can kind of tell that the people putting the the panels of the UN together, like had it, like it, it was a, it a different group than I would have picked. Let's put it that way for some of the topics. Okay. Like we had, I think the biggest one that drove me crazy is Karen Sandler was in the audience. <laughs> and it was like one of the things, like, but she should be up for this topic. She should be up there. You know, like there was stuff like that where I was like, I knew people in the audience that I felt should have been the ones that okay. would have. And so, I mean, like some people were great. I mean, obviously, most of the most of the panelists were great. Um, almost all, I mean, all of them were great, but like there was a little bit of, I think, imbalance in some of the, the ways things were discussed. Uh, were there topics the that were like unique or new that kind of came from? Well, I, th I for, for me, I think the, the, just the discussion of some of what's going on in the, in, um, let's say they, what they, you know, typically it's called the global south, but we actually started calling it the global majority as one person pointed out because it is actually the majority of the world. Um, and uh, I, I mean, to the extent that it was discussed, I thought that was great. Um, and um, where they, f where um, kind of the open source activities going on in the different UN agencies, which even though I was there last year, I don't think I quite sensed. Um, 
Mm -hmm. Some of them, I mean, a couple of them were just like, oh, this reminds me of a panel from the Linux Foundation. So I've been on this, but it was nice for other people to, who don't go to that conference, who were in the audience to go, um, I think. Um, they, they had, uh, the youth one was actually pretty interesting, kind of showing what the results of the hackathon that they had. And that was something I wouldn't have see, seen elsewhere, I think. So David, what are your thoughts on the uniqueness? Um, yeah, I agree with, with everything you're saying. Um, it's all new and unique to me. <laughs> so um, I was honored to to go. I thought that, like you said, the people in the audience were super impressive and we had no time to talk to them, <laughs> that, yeah. you know, which was which was frustrating. Um, my big takeaway is that there's a lot of governments that are like moving to and focusing more on open source um, and, 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 a, and a larger community that's growing like internationally um, and that the UN in particular is trying to focus on the SDGs and, and thinks that open source can really help right. um, res address the SDGs. So I, I like that idea of like focusing our research and our open source work towards solving actual problems and not just theoretical problems. So I think that was a, a cool part of the I like presentation. That. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think there was a, what I remembered. I quote, wrote down, finally wrote down a quote because uh, they do. By the way, everything is on. Like the entire conference is, the video is online uh, in the UN TV, whatever. I think it's called UN TV or something like that. But it's I can put the link uh, to the main site. You just have to search it. It's not easy to find. I mean, it's not categorized very well. But if you just search OSPOs, it comes up. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was really because this point point of like. The UN exists, and this is back. This is hard getting back to when that was. This is what I did my my master's degree on was like international organizations, and so I, I know a lot about how the UN works and and doesn't work and that type of thing. But um, the the UN exists because of some challenges that are too complex for for nations to tackle alone. That's kind of the quote that the guy said. And so the uh, and open source is very has exists similarly that it's something that is not necessarily you know one group or small group can do on their own that's why you have these communities and i thought that was a really nice kind of way of merging why we're doing this at the un um uh and why the un activity in it was actually really interesting like and it was it just, and it, yeah i like oh that resonated with me having kind of looked at that that theoretically looked at how these organizations multilateral organizations work kind of see how to link the u like uh the uh, open source into that and maybe wondering why like oh this is why i get it <laughs> it's like this is what I, you know, like I worked in before, so. Um, Jonathan, do you have a comment too? Yeah, I've heard the uh, similar feedback from everyone who's, who's been there. And it, it um, sounds amazing. It's great to be in the UN, but frankly, it's pretty concerning that there were so many amazing people in the room and it feels like at least secondhand that, that there's just not a lot of actionable stuff that came out of it because there wasn't space for people to talk and build together. So I'm, but it was a, it was definitely thing. feedback that people that the group that people got and that I think that was why they did this that third day the way they did it and like I said the third day was all exactly what you would expect of them you know I mean you know hallway tracks interactive sessions Georg and I did the one on metrics which went really well so we had a lot of people talking people sharing we had like round, you know round table or not round table like groups where everybody went to the different you know talked to their mentor oh, no that was the second sorry. We had we broke out in groups. There was also another like speed mentoring session where there's always a lot of interaction. It was like the absolute opposite on the third day. It was like completely interactive. Like that's wonderful. Multiple panels. Are there everybody asked act, the Are there actionable things that are coming out of it that folks can get involved with? And then My, another question would be that like it, it seems it's still even with that third day, um, it does seem like a big missed opportunity to have such a collision of people and and not have it be action oriented have it be discussion oriented so i'm curious if there are any discussions on how to capture the same people in a different environment that's more working focused well one of the um one of the activities um this is kind of more from osmo plus plus but there but it is actually there's some of the un focuses and there's at, at fossi there's going to be a, a track of an additional track that's not on the list there yet, where um, that's one of the reasons I needed you to change the time on your session because I needed to swap to get it mine also attached to a little bit closer to that, but also because this, we, John, Jonathan and I are having a site, we're having a site discussion about FOSSI timing. 
um, uh, session timing is a bossy, but uh, so right before that, the, the, the Friday morning, there is supposed to be also a session that's, I think it's open to the public, but it's, um, it hasn't made it into the um, schedule yet. That's basically we're talking to kind of having a little bit of a follow on on some of the discussions with regards to the different types of networks that are working together, like the city's networks and then the UN agency's networks and the, and then like the UC network is gonna be involved in that discussion as well. And so and so it's a follow on to that discussion about how do OSPOs work together, which is I think a lot of what, um, that kind of interconnectedness is what was trying to, they, like they were trying to resonate a little bit in the third day action items, and I think the action focus day. And that was kind of what the third day was called. It was like, what do we do next? It's kind of the day of action type of thing. Yeah. And um, so I know that's happening afterwards. I think that there's also more, I know we're pretty like uh, Georg and I are putting, or Georg and I, Georg is probably taking the lead. And then the person who helped us by taking notes is putting, uh, taking the lead on putting out some materials from like our session on metrics and value of open source. Was and um I don't know about the other groups, but I think the other groups are also putting together. So I do feel like there is some follow on from um, from that third day. Like, I feel like what happened with we talked, talked, talked on this first two days and everybody kind of like. Like a lot of people were just, oh, now we're on the same page. We all understand. Uh, but now what are we going to do? And I felt like the third day was a little bit more like, OK, what what can we do? So and we it was a lot of. The third day for me was a lot of meeting the people like, oh, you know, you're working on this thing. The people, the net, but especially being the UC network, but be, being like, I, we had all six of the campuses at the UN meeting and um, five of us at the Friday meeting. Um, they, and, and so know? we got a lot of attention, like people just kept coming up to us. So, hey, what are you doing? Like, so I feel like there's, there's like that meeting kind of started the discussion, the third day kind of started the discussions on what starts next. Will there be a plan to run this again next year? Do you know, I is there, so. is there, okay. I, I mean, I feel like there, at least from the UN. There is a plan. Yeah, is there, you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, what Michael is, Downey was at Guadec after, so I got oh, a lot oh, of this okay. from him. So, cause he helped organize it. Mm -hmm. um, his main takeaway that I heard was that there were like 600 people, which is awesome. Yeah. So there was just, and everyone that, was there. Um, and that was like what I heard, like the hallway track was everything, but also the hallway track was really difficult because you just didn't have time to talk to everyone. Exactly. So there is a plan to do it next year. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you got to talk to people like you were next to you and stuff like that. So that helped, but sure. it wasn't the hall. Yeah. I think, and I think they got the, the, I, the hallway track's just hard in the UN because we don't have like the space for it. There is no problem. Just, uh, hey, 600 is a lot of people too. I don't think I knew there were yeah. that many people. There was a lot there. of people. That's a lot of. It's a great turnout. I mean that. Like, right, let's bring up that one. There's a lot of people. Michael yeah. is totally right. They did a great job on that one. They got it. So good, good is job. the third day also going to be that that day of action? So, it, it, yeah, I think it's really important to capture that. But uh, this yeah. is way out of scope for this discussion group. But <laughs> we can yes, let's let's we yeah. can we might need to move on just because we have a couple different items here, and I know that. I I would I would add yeah. if we're talking about day of action I think um and especially like from a metrics perspective I think for me and because you know my background is in public policy and UN stuff is like so up my alley but where the action really hit the road in a lot of spaces was really where those city labs took you know what you were doing in research and what you were doing sort of like in the academic track and like really made it live in spaces so I think if we think about, you know, how we take this kind of work forward, I think we talk about research in our context because that's where we live. Um, and, you know, we need to talk about tenure and promotion and we need to talk about impacts to research and things like that. But this applied space is where there's a lot of power in story and a lot of power in just putting that research into to, to traction and giving it wheels to go. We might think, um, and maybe, I mean, I'm sure, well, Richard, you just communicated that you have access to like the organizers, but but we might think not only like um, along the research track, but how the research applies. And then what we're looking at is outcomes to measure sort of that interaction. Um, because I think that's actually a space where, um, where there's a lot of power. Angela, I love everything you said. So th there's also more to that when you do that applied, uh, that application of open source to wider communities, it brings people into the system, gets them educated, lets them participate as well. Um, so if, if this is happening next year and there is going to be a plan of action day, I'm hoping 
you know, like I've heard this story from probably five different groups now. I'm hoping the people who love organizing, me being one of them, can get together and kind of push, shape, mold this thing to be highly, highly actionable. Because it, it did sound like it was just a powerhouse of people who could make change. And it seems like there's, there might not be a lot of change that comes out of this, this potential, which seems sad to me. Well, to the extent that you and, and Richard and others are, are on the planning committee or associated with it, I would love to help with that because this, like I say, this is totally in my wheelhouse. I love this, passionate about this. Yeah, I I, I think Angela, this, like, yeah, I think that we, if they would have had a panel exactly that talked about what you did, they would have made a huge difference, I think, in the, what would the outcomes would have been on the, on the two days where it was like real case studies of things where that showed applied, yeah. you know, applications for, from academia and research open source to the real world. And I think that would have been a huge, that would be huge. So. Yeah, Richard. I want to kind of have a different perspective. One of my favorite conferences is Monktoberfest. Um, nothing happens. It's, you don't know the talks before you get, get there. It's single track. It's two days. People give talks and that's it. There's no actionable items. There's nothing coming out of it. And a lot of the times those conferences are actually better because the real benefit of going to a thing like this is being able to source other people's opinions and update your internal um, understanding of the world in terms of open source and how it works. Um, having like an actionable item can also sometimes force a conversation to go down alleyways where it's then limited, where you know the, the reality has been narrowed down to a couple pages on a Google Doc or something. Um, and I find that often just actually talking to people and learning about things and downloading with others after a talk can be just as good as having a quality session that leads to, say, a new, you know, project or working group or something. So it just seemed like a lot of this conversation was focusing on like having actual items. And for me, I kind of view conferences as like the main benefit is having people in the room together, sharing the same air, learning about each other and being able to call up later when you actually do need something to, to be done. Um, so I don't know how to, how to justify that in terms of worth, but for me, that's my perspective. I, yeah. Point I, of clarity. Actual item is not necessarily like a working group or a tangible doc. It is that, that space to breathe and communicate with people, which it sounds like did not exist at the, the UN days. I think yeah, it did I exist think... at the UN days. Okay. And, and I can get behind that. Like, I, I understand that there's value just in having conversations and things like that, but you're talking about being at the UN. And um, you're talking about having a platform and a community that you might not get to see um, outside of a very rarefied space. So having something concrete that you can take away and work on keeps that that meaningful connection that builds that community out there. So I, I absolutely think there's space for both. Um, but I know that I'm certainly more motivated to keep that conversation going if I have a responsibility to that other entity. And it's one that I would really like to have. So I absolutely agree that there's space for both, but but see the value in 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 the harder connection in this space. Yeah, David. You're muted. Sorry, really quickly. Um, they did create a Slack space um, so people can communicate afterwards. Um, they, the UN organizers did have a call for action at the very end. They said, we want you to come back next year and tell, tell us how you're progressing you know, towards resolving or, or addressing the SDGs um, with specifics. So they had that in mind, but I don't think they created enough space for the connections um, personally. But, but yeah, the, the people they put in the room were, were phenomenal. And I think, you know, they can learn and, and it'll be better next year. I will say as somebody, so thank you for all of this conversation. As somebody who didn't go watching at a distance, the amount of effort to bring that many amazing people together was, was really amazing. And um, I was really happy to see all of those people, as you're all saying, in the same room and on the same days together. Um, and if that group can carry over next year, I suspect that action can be found the more we we can continue to do this so that was it was really cool um it was a group of people that i don't think i'd seen together in in a conference before necessarily <laughs> so that was nice all right well yeah, beautiful I, building yeah um that's that's yeah the pictures were really cool they're um uh the, the style in the UN is really interesting. 
to take a look at from a from a distance. Uh, the design. Okay. Uh, well, I had I had thought maybe that was going to be a five or ten minute conversation, um, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> it's re I'm really glad you all got to go. So that's great. And I would really like to be there next year myself. Um, Allison, are you? <laughs> Wait, for, do we need to help you with that? Like, did you get an invite? Like, do we need to? Oh, like... no, I couldn't go. Okay. okay. I just, I thank yeah. you though. But I just. He was to... supposed to do the, the the workshop. I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you I, had, mine. <laughs> I had invite for this one. <laughs> um. Okay, so um, Allison, last time we had this talk, um, Allison had mentioned a, a survey that they had done at, at Madison. Um, and Allison, do you want to talk about this a little bit? And I can certainly bring it up and maybe um, I think a couple things that came up last week, you know, kind of what you're seeing at Madison and then maybe how others could use the, the resources that you have here to also do something similar at their universities, so. Yeah, totally. So um, it was sort of, a part of our grant from the beginning that we really wanted to conduct a survey because as a large you know, public land grant university um, everything is really siloed here uh, it's it's difficult to find pockets of things and as i started talking to um, the people i knew about um, i would ask them you know do you know of anyone else on campus doing similar open source work and things like that and sometimes they would say yes but a lot of the time they would say no and i wish i did you know um, so i i really saw that our community was looking um, to be connected in at sort of a practitioner level of around open source topics and and um, really creating that sort of open source software community and so um, that was sort of the, the context of how we approached this survey and what we wanted to include in it. So we developed um, in Qualtrics, which is something that we have a contract with at UW-Madison, we developed a survey and we have an outreach specialist, Bethany, who was instrumental in putting together a very excellent um, list of people <laughs> to send the survey to um, and you know she she really combed you know all of our resources um, we have sort of like a faculty profile situation um, a sort of vivo-esque thing that was that's like a, a homegrown version of that um, and you know she's keyword search for open source in there she looked around at other events and things that had happened before, but sort of fizzled off um, student organizations that don't exist anymore, but did at one point um, and things like that. We also used our data science newsletter to, um, as we're part of the Data Science Institute, we really pushed this through the existing group of people that received that newsletter. Um, and so we we really worked on sending this out, sending reminders, getting getting it to people, and um, and you know writing down all the people on there that we already knew of as well. So we had that big push, and we got a lot of good responses. Um, I think it was around 400 by the end of it, um, and so it was a really great. Um, to see how people thought about open source, how people were conceptualizing not only open source software, but also their their perceptions of community on campus. And, and what we found that is sort of the main story that I think we've taken from this is that people on campus really value open source and open source software, but they do not see it as a robust community on campus. And, and, and I think that track to the experiences of people that are, are very siloed and not aware of, of other people doing similar work. Um, so we know that people are interested in open source, that people are doing this work, that we, we got some good data on the tools they use and, and um, how they're using licensed uh, software from IT as well. And we, and they, we also had them, you know, link to their repositories and, you know, provide um information on any projects they knew about like if there was something they were aware of that they um you know collaborated with or took inspiration from um so building building out 
the group of people we we are aware of um and so yeah we we really saw that people are hungry for community and they really want to be connected and work together and that's not something that really exists on campus yet and i think that is a big way that the ospo can can contribute value to our open source community and you know demonstrate our value to administrators it's like wow look at all of this amazing stuff that's going on that maybe we didn't know about before and you know we're we're uniting this and into a community providing resources for it providing guidance um, to really strengthen uh, what we're doing here and really um, trying to tie in this to our recent campus major initiatives, which involve sustainability, artificial intelligence, and the new biotech hub that um, was awarded to Wisconsin. So yeah, we, we um, spun up this little Quarto um, page that we published everywhere, sent out the results to the people that responded, of course. We also asked them um, as a part of the survey if they wanted to be in our OSPO Google group, and we got a lot of people that said yes to that. <laughs> so then we were able to send through our Google group that we added people to um, the results of what they contributed to in this little document that our data scientists helped us uh, create. And yeah, so that um, we're, we're really excited to, you know, take these results and and fill the needs that we see in them. And we also have a little tab for reproducing the survey in case anyone would like to use either the survey instrument itself, the questions we used, or this Quarto doc format for publishing um, and analyzing the results and making pretty little charts and things um, that's all available. There's a there's a template for both of those things and you can customize the theme to your university. So yeah. Cool. That's um, my little spiel. David had a question in the chat. Yeah, did oh, you have any chat. incentives to encourage participation? I heard something about two dollar bills. <laughs> no, we did not. Although that is that I do find that funny for context. Um, we did consult initially with our survey center, which we will continue to do now that we have these initial results. We'll probably look to focus our results down to particular groups based on the responses we got and things like that. And they are the largest user of $2 bills like in the Midwest because they send them as incentives for, for filling out surveys um, and people seem to really enjoy that. But no, we did not have any um, incentives to to do this um we i think you know we knew we had a really enthusiastic group of people that were really hungry for this kind of activity and that you know they would they would be nice and help us out <laughs> basically but two dollar bills might not be a bad idea if you're thinking about <laughs> doing this yourself <laughs> one of the interesting things that because we had talked about this last time to allison that kind of came of the conversation for me was, and it was new to me, was the focus on community at the university. I had always yes. kind of imagined that term community as being like an open source community that is yeah. like either external to the university or is being run by a university faculty member or researcher group that includes Right. From outside of the university again, the community yeah. had always kind of meant something a little different to me. And I think what you had shown here is different. It's a different view on that. So thanks for that. Yeah, I, I and that's that's an angle where we really that came out of our context and, you know, conversations that had been had when we were developing this grant is that, you know, there's the community that uses open source software and benefits from it. There's a community around a particular project that's contributing to it, but there's also like the practitioner to practitioner community of people that, you know, maybe want to share their knowledge or collaborate together that have similar values in the open space. And this is something we really believe will make a strong, you know, case for, for open source just by uniting all the people doing it and, and basically shouting, we are here, like Horton hears a who or something. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I see in the chat, 
see value in having aggregate results if we all do the survey. Yeah, that would be fantastic. I'm a, I'm a big fan of like finding a way to sort of co-locate our resources. And I, this is already on the, the Curios resource page. Um, and so it's, it's in there as, and that could be the place for this. But, you know, as I'm thinking about how we're all, you know, working on finding our community, mapping projects, doing playbooks, things like that, it would be great to create, I, in my opinion, some sort of shared repository, one-stop shop situation. Um, yeah. Particularly for things yeah. that are nicely put together like this. <laughs> this is really great. <laughs> Having that yeah. reproducibility page is really nice for everybody as well. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, we're, we're the open source program office. We got we to gotta make things reproducible. <laughs> very fair. <laughs> Very, very fair. <laughs> and we, we, you know, we're, we're all here because we want to be a community too, right? You know, we're sharing our knowledge or information. So I, I really think that that sort of resources page and, and co-locating these things is really of a benefit to all OSPOs. And, and yeah, happy to, you know, if anyone wants to discuss in, in more depth, reach out, reach out and talk about it, happy to, happy to talk. I do have one question. Is there yeah. a... Is there a license on this material? There is a license on the repository that contains okay. this that stuff. Kind of it cascades to the material. Yes. Got it. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Cool. Very great. Uh, all right. So we have, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And I know that David and Stephanie also are going to be doing a presentation. And I think they're looking for some feedback from this group on their presentation. No, I like the idea of you all just showing up to the meeting and we just talking about it. <laughs> I don't have to actually do any work, but yes, we are, uh, we are doing, yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, so this is for who else, I can't remember who else is involved with the, this group. Um, uh, the open sources tech, technology transfer that Andrew from uh, Johns Hopkins kind of put together and the point of it is, I mean, the, one, the main output of this is just kind of like more of a, I always feel like it's more of a task force than a working group because it's main out, it's got a specific output in mind. It's like a, um, having a, um, a set of materials for a, uh, the soft, God, the, the, uh, the software courses that are done for tech transfer folks in universities and in, at the autumn, uh, which is their kind of professional group, the autumn group that is in October, November of this year, no, October, November, I forget it. I'm supposed to go and I don't know when it is. October. In Portland, I know it's in Portland. Um, and, um, and so we've been doing it for like, I feel like we've been having these meetings for about 18 months and each month is kind of just, you know, talking over what, a lot of it initially was just discussions about like, what are your university doing or what are these case studies that we have on, and I remember Jay, uh, so Andrew, for those who don't know him, is actually from their, I don't think it's called text transfer office, but that's anymore, but that's where he's from at uh, Johns Hopkins. So he works with, you know, our, all of our, you know, Bill and uh, Megan at uh, Johns Hopkins. Um, and uh, anyway, so we, what David and I somehow were volunteered to do, I don't remember actually saying I was going to do this, but was just to give a quick overview of some of the activities that or how do we like just kind of a discussion to have the discussion about the metrics and incentives in for tech transfer and for open source in academia and um i wasn't really sure where we were going because i don't even know what exactly the questions were and this is a discussion david and i were like what were we supposed to answer but um part of it is that i thought well it would be useful if we just kind of went over some of the stuff that this working group has already discussed so i just randomly i just like blatantly stole slides and, and and work from here and put it together in a slide deck right there. Um, and I've uh, adapted it. I mean, I'm sorry, I, I have credited it. That I left the chaos logos on things. <laughs> and I put things like, this is actually Matt's work. You know? <laughs> so, so um, but what I did was I just took, this was from that, I think the, I took a couple of slides from uh, an older slide deck, but like the, the most updated version, I think of the slide deck. That we had from earlier with that uh, the, and I, let me see if i shared screen so you know what i'm talking about oh uh do you want to okay. share your screen stephanie yeah that'd be easier okay hold on can you do it now or do i need to make you co-host no i should be able to yeah no it's good all right so i'm just using yeah for this version here um everybody see that there yes so 
why is it showing it to me that I have too many screens open probably. You can see that just fine. I can okay. see the slide deck. What did I just do? Sorry. Uh, I see the Microsoft screen. There, I see it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just because I did. So you can, yeah. So if I move, you can see it still, right? That's it. Yes. Cool. Yeah. I remember you said it just looks really weird on my screen. I've had this the last. It's okay. Couple for, times. It looks completely normal. Okay. Cool. Um. So. Uh, yeah. So I was using this one. Um. That we all like. We know this one very much. Uh. And uh. And I, so that's kind of a, an opening. And but then I also took the from the chaos open source goals document that y'all put together. I feel like that was maybe from about a year ago. I yeah. just added these discussion points just to kind of highlight some of the things for these folks to think about. Um, and so you can go, I like I added the link so people can kind of go through it at their at their leisure as well. And and then I put the metrics included, which is also from that document. Um, and uh, and so that's really, so that's a lot there. So I haven't done a lot to this. I basically just okay. got yeah. copied and pasted. Um, and then David, you added the, he actually did work and added stuff on the, on the end. <laughs> so I, if you want to talk about those, <laughs> and I I'll stop of, sharing my screen. Um, I kind of barfed onto the slides. You can keep sharing. Um, oh, okay. Okay. I'll go back to it then. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm more in line with kind of what Angela and inspired by the UN conference, um, in just a general like loving a more applied focus for the metrics. Um, so this was, if you just go to the next slide, I mean, you've probably all seen this. Have you all seen this? Yeah. Um, so I just think it's like, what are we doing with the metrics? It's all about telling a story. Um, and you guys all heard about that MS and T Zotera ban that, that was happening. Yeah. So that like their IT department is being told a story that Zotero is unsafe. Um, you know, what? we need to like, um, yeah, because I think because the competitors <laughs> are, yeah. are saying, yeah. well, they're not filling out their paperwork, you know, you, they need to do all of their due diligence. Of course, we've learned with, um, CrowdStrike that the big companies that are doing all the due diligence don't have a monopoly on security. Um, well, so Zotero anyway, it's not core infrastructure. Let's be real. <laughs> No, no, it's a it's a very bizarre. They were going to ban it from laptops, even though it's like hosted on the cloud and and people are using their private emails. It, it's just a complete miscommunication. It's not a security risk in any way. It's a complete miscommunication by an IT department who's getting a bad story from somewhere that that it, that it is a security risk when it's not. Anyway, the <laughs> I'm fascinated with the, the data and how we like where do metrics fit in in here? You know, how do we make sure that we don't get to the conspiracies? theory side of things with the metrics that we choose. Um, if you jump to the next one, um, I actually reference Allison's survey because I think it's fantastic and it's a great example of um, some collecting some valuable data that can be used for metrics um, and it already exists and it, in my opinion, is kind of guaranteed to tell a good story the, the way you've done it. So it's either telling a story that um, that we have a great open source community, or it's telling a story that that people want to have an open a great open source, <laughs> and and they don't quite yet. Um, so and I think that those are two true stories that just happen to be come from the University of Wisconsin data, and we're seeing that in, in ours as well. Um, if you go to the next one, um, so. I'm looking at the autumn users that we would be presenting to. Um, they seem to be researcher focused. Um, <laughs> my point here is that we're the metrics don't necessarily need to be focused on the researchers and the research organizations. They, sh in my opinion, they should be more focused towards what are we producing. You know, let's make an impact to society. Let's make sure the communities are being impacted. Um, so my, one of my takeaways from the OSPOs for good. Um, is that they they had some interesting presentations, things like stop overvaluing publications and citations, um, and really focusing on the ur ur urgent challenges. Um, and and they were talking through that the the peer review process and the publication process and doing things like embargoes are completely antithetical to meeting the the crisis at hand. So we we need to maybe have some big changes in in the way we think. And I think we'd need metrics too change that. They had a really nice example 
on the third day of a Swedish pathogens portal where they basically um, were measuring wastewater and they could determine an outbreak of some disease two weeks in advance if they measured this this out wastewater um, and so they instead of like just writing a paper they built a tool so that their community could actually <laughs> uh, detect outbreaks two weeks in advance um, it's fantastic um, so yeah we open source gives you the tools to, to build those kinds of you know immediate dashboards and tools um, next one I'm sorry I'm babbling on um, this is actually no. This is actually more helpful than what I'm all like. Oh, look, you could made it actually applicable. <laughs> so another really cool thing from the UN was um, I had never heard of the DPG Alliance, the Digital Public Goods Alliance, um, but they're they sort of have a process where they evaluate um, open source projects and you know, do they have an open source license? Um, do they have any? sustainable development goal relevance um, and, and then they have a technical review process and so you could kind of get the stamp of certification um, so that's something that I think would be interesting for people to explore not only is your project like open source and, and has some value you know some demonstrated openness principles that it's that you can you know give some kind of standard to but but then you're also aligning it to you know solving some of these critical mission problems. Um, the next one is there was an open framework paper on OI, AI. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, and I love the list that they have of potential benefits from openness. So this to me is a great starting point of we could prioritize this list. We could um, uh, some of the things apply more to tech transfer, some apply more to an open source program office you know, as a priority. Um, and then I think there are some gaps, like some things that we need to identify metrics or, or measurements. Um, but I think we can agree that these are all benefits. Um, and, and there's a long list. And I, I think most of them are really, um, I agree with, with them. Um, and this is, this is tailored towards AI, but I think it applies much more broadly in, in general. So... Uh, I think this is like would be a good thing to map metrics to um, to to these this list. And then the last one. Um, so th we talked about this in, in the last one, um, one of the, the previous meetings, but there's um, there's a list of the maturity, like different markdown files that are available in open source projects um, or that you should have um, if the the. the the link in the second bullet has it. And then the open um, DPG Alliance also has a, a, a separate markdown called open stand open standards.md, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and so like just measuring are those files in a repo, you know, are they following are, are, are the text in those files, you know, matching the some of the open practices that, that we encourage as a, as a metric to, to see if a project is is healthy and open um, as well as identifying like does it have an open license etc cetera, etc cetera. so just putting those things together um, as concrete ways that we could start to measure projects would you like some help with these slides stephanie and david i mean are you looking for feedback i guess yeah i think feedback would be the um the, or anything that we're missing i think uh Dave, richard just put in a comment in the chat yeah. about it um, I haven't looked at what he, what he basically. <laughs> I mean, it's, that was that was just a. Oh, I, I realized after I wrote it that maybe that was a bit spicy. I just everything else is fine, but eight just says nothing and it does. It's just not necessary. So yeah. anyway, sorry. Dumb and I don't like it. <laughs> foster the you mean foster the unexpected or unimagined. Yeah, what does that even mean? What Dr. Seuss? Sorry, sorry everyone, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a witty comeback, but I can't think of anything. Okay. For me. <laughs> But um, but yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think the idea would be like, I know we don't have a lot of time, but like if there was any, I think we're, I think uh, David and I and, and uh, the other person working on this is Bob from UTA, uh, Angela. Um, so, uh, uh, or he's again got somehow volunteered. He's still not clear how that happened. We kind of the same way we are, um, and uh, and um, 
so and we're basically just get yeah if we get some feedback on this even if you want to you know send us notes or do stuff yeah, in the chat i'm like sorry in the slack I what? Like, i'd like to help i like this yeah. and I, I think it would be cool to think through like what are some of those um <clears throat> like early steps that a university or an organization can think about with yeah. understanding that value that'd be really really nice yeah. um when is when is this oh uh, the, the main thing that we're i mean the first thing they were initial thing we're doing is on friday so it's i don't expect much feedback by that but i think ultimately the materials are going to be used for the um the autumn event uh, the the organization autumn which is actually in the fall so i guess it's the autumn event in autumn <laughs> um and uh and um, that would be a great time where by that point having some like more refined feedback that we could then put into the actual presentations that are given at the course. And like I said, this is, um, they, uh, I said, and I think uh, David alluded to that the main target is people who like the tech transfer folks, the people that are like making these assessments about licensing and whether something, you know, and how, how universities at the, like at the ground, at the you know ground level feel about things being open sourced versus, um, you know, not. <laughs> so um, it, yeah, it'd be good to have a good framework. And I think that, I think that the added, the slides that you actually added, uh, at putting the applet, uh, making it more of an applied understanding of how it all is supposed to work together. And yeah, the survey is great timing as well. I'm gonna stop sharing, sorry, I forgot. I didn't realize that's what's yeah. sharing, but I think the survey was like, that's, that's really good timing for us to actually add to that. And then, and then now knowing that a lot of OSPOs are actually doing surveys like that. So there's actually going to be real good data out there that's not just one or two universities, but like a good handful of us. I think it's more, um, you know, more that we can point to as something more definitive of yeah. how things are going. So, just, so yeah, I guess I would okay. say um, comments, general comments in the slides or especially for the slides where you think thing, maybe something got tweaked and I'm using an old version. That's a good one for me to know. Um, and um, or, and then also in the, the Slack or just email or something uh, to us as well. Um, but then, and once we have the discussion on Friday, I we could report back um, either via Slack or at the next meeting uh, okay. to what feedback we got and then help maybe that would also be a great time to, to get. To yeah, it. this sounds great. I encourage people to check out that link that Stephanie provided and provide feedback there, particularly if your organization is actually trying to understand value <laughs> in, in yeah. this regard, even just small comments, I think would be helpful even before Friday. Yeah. Be nice. Okay. We are over. Oh. Yes. Did you have a comment? I, I just wanted to know if Jonathan had any specific metrics in mind that he was thinking about, or um, uh, to me, the, um, the survey focuses on kind of the community and brings in a lot of those metrics. I was wondering if he had additional metrics that he was thinking. No, about. I think the, the survey is great. Um, it just, the storytelling of community is very powerful when it's justifying open source versus things like reproducibility, which are important, but not very tangible to a lot of people. Uh, other metrics, um, actually, so I've been working with Mike's script from UT and I've generalized it so we can run this on any institution now. And it can speak to like how many people in the university are actually building open source software, et cetera. Some of those metrics might be useful. Um, Things like that, but the survey, Allison, that. Legit, the survey is really, really good. I, I, I was going to add that, but I haven't gotten it yet. I, um, do you you have the GitHub API search queries that he that they have shared? Uh, yeah, um, I'm running a test. Hopefully, a final test on it right now. Uh, but gimme, I can gimme, 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 gimme. Yeah, <laughs> so it's a, it's a little more complex. It might need a walkthrough at this point because it's got um, you have to write a queries file and then do some really interesting stuff so but yeah happy to share i'll i know we're way over so i'll put more details in the in the slack channel yeah that'd be great i appreciate that jonathan all right everybody thanks for an excellent conversation covered a lot of ground today so it's good to see you and have a good what rest of your wednesday okay take care bye everybody bye, bye. bye. thanks everyone